We're staying with family right now and everyone's out of the Airstream for a week or two. So it's a really good chance for me to get some work done on the trailer, especially around the wheels. The brakes are making a loud squealing sound. When you're towing, everything that has to do with the wheels and the brakes and the axles is very important. So I want that to be in the best shape it can. So I wanna take care of the brakes and get any maintenance done that they might need. Also, while I'm at it, get new tires. Once a year, it's recommended to repack the bearings on the wheels. I wanna just do everything with the wheels and get the wheels and axles in as good a shape as I can before we do any more extensive traveling. Yeah, how'd you know? Because. Happy birthday to Mama. Mm. Happy birthday to me. Lux. Ruff. Rainbow. Ruff. Rainbow. 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 We're not going to blow it because of social distancing. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear Michelle. Michelle. I came over in the corner so I could blow the birthday candle out and make a wish. I really want to eat a cake, Mom. And this is for the... Happy birthday, dear Michelle. Happy birthday to you! Yay! We're at Bay Area Airstream in Fairfield, California, and we're picking up the Airstream after getting the brakes checked and cleaned, new wheels and tires, and a new tow chain. We've been without our home for about a week and a half, so we're really happy to be bringing it back. Happily surprised to have had such a great experience at this dealership in Fairfield, California. They've been so communicative and helpful, and it's just been nothing but a positive experience. So I would definitely recommend coming here. It's been a couple of weeks since I broke the bracket that secures the propane tanks to, down to the Airstream. I was tightening down the propane bracket and this just snapped. So I've had a couple of weeks to calm down. When that bracket broke, I was pretty upset. Luckily, I was able to figure out a way to fit those in the white van, but it's pretty inconvenient to have to remove the propane tanks every time we want to move the Airstream. Obviously, the tanks are supposed to ride on the tongue of the trailer, so having to take them off every time we move the Airstream, is not very fun. Luckily, I was able to fit them into the white van. The white van is pretty spacious. And I was able to fit these two propane tanks right there. Obviously, this is not a long-term solution. So it's also been a couple of weeks. So that part that I ordered has arrived. So I'm excited to test it out. Hopefully it's gonna be equivalent to what I had before and I can get the propane tanks stored back on here. I'll show you what we're dealing with here. This is the new part. It looks pretty much exactly the same. The old one had some threading inside and this one doesn't have threading so for a good 30 minutes i had a proper freak out that we waited this long to get this part to arrive and it's not quite the same because there's no threading in here so i put it over here and if there's no threading it's not going to stay on there but then i realized it never thread in the first place it did happen to have some threads but that's not the way it worked there's this and that's what was holding the bracket down before just a small misunderstanding. So what I had been using to tighten these down was this adjustable wrench. Just kind of doing it like that. On the day that I broke the bracket, I had also broken this wrench. It just fell apart into like four pieces and I couldn't figure out how to put it back together. So anyway, I thought, well, I'll just use this ratcheting wrench. It's the same size. And it's kind of neat because I don't have to keep setting it. It allowed me to put too much tension on this nut. So I think it's still okay to use a ratcheting wrench because it is more convenient. It's not gonna go crazy over tightening it anymore. It seems like it doesn't, this doesn't want to be straight and also have enough room for the hoses. In order for these tanks to feel like they're seated properly, I end up having to have this be at an angle this way feels like this is pinned against the tank, this hose, and I just don't like having all this pressure. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or not. See how that's at an angle? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it all off and try again to see if I can get a better positioning. As an engineer, I really like things to be secure. 
In my ideal world, each tank would have its own bracket and it would just kind of snap in and lock in and be super secure. The two hoses wouldn't have to be coupled together. Each hose would just kind of come up and have plenty of room to snap on and, uh, and thread onto these connectors. If I knew how to weld and make things, maybe I could make something cool like that. Before I tighten it down, either tank is movable. And it's kind of tricky to get it lined up in that groove right there. Basically have to twist it. And when I twist it, it almost pins this hose against the, uh, against the gauge stem there. So if I twist it that way, then this whole thing rotates and then it pops out of this groove that it's supposed to go in. And it also puts a lot of pressure in this direction on that tank. I'll admit there's a very good chance I just don't know something about it. If you know, comment below if you have any idea for me on why this isn't sitting as well as it, I feel like it should. So I'm not sure if this is the original design or a modification, but the box is prevented from reaching the tongue by this bundle of cables. One, it's not a good solid contact with the tongue, so it, it's gonna be lopsided and a little mushy and wobbly even when it's tight. But even worse, it means that there's a lot of pressure being put on these cables. And you can see there how it kind of smashes that bundle of cables. And if there's one thing you learn about me, it's that I don't like putting pressure on cables. So I guess my question is, how crazy is it if we didn't use that box at all? Comment below and let me know what you think. Is it a totally crazy idea? I've seen other RVs that have tanks on the front. I've never seen an, an Airstream that didn't have the box on, but part of me wants to try it. You want to balance? Mm -hmm. Our cheese? cheese? Cheese! Look at the curb and balance. Beep, beep. Is it 10? No, it's 9. I'm going to blow Lyndon's mind when you see. You're not going to believe it. What? Did you figure it out? Tell me when you see something you remember. The road. What? what? We go this path. Yeah. Why do we go here? Look where we popped out. What? Remember we walked up there? Yeah. That's where our walk started, but we're coming back. Wow. We sneaked around. What? How do we do this? What's that sign say above your head? Stop. It says what? Yeah. Can you read the letters? Yeah. First time I had to refill the soap, I didn't actually know that you could pull this up and fill it from the top. I went under the sink and unthreaded the whole thing and made a big mess. And it turns out this is way easier that you can just lift this out and fill it from the top. I didn't find that out until I ordered the replacement part and it said that's one of the features that you could fill it from the top. So good to know. Hand washing is always important and these days it's even more important. So I want to make sure it's possible to wash my hands right by the entrance to the Airstream and that means the kitchen sink. When we put the Airstream in storage, I think the heat of Tucson just got to that plastic bottle and the threads cracked right where it screws into the sink. So we haven't been able to use the soap dispenser at the sink. You'd think that's a little thing that doesn't really make a big difference, but I found myself walking with dirty hands, walking into the bathroom, and then I'm in the way of the kids, and sometimes a kid is using the bathroom. Every chance I get, I try to replace or fix or repair whatever issue it is. I don't like to have a big mental list of things that are breaking down. So today I'm gonna fix the soap dispenser. I ordered a new bottle. It should just be an easy replacement, but it turns out a piece of the threading got stuck up into the pump, so I need to get some kind of tool to get up in there and pry it out. Unfortunately, I just had to buy the whole pump, so I got a new pump just to get the bottle. I know that's kind of silly, but I know that it fits, and this is the, the only way I know how to get this job done. So now I've got an extra pump in case this one ever breaks. Uh, I like the original one, the one that's with the Airstream, so I'm not going to use this unless I have to. So you can see the way it works is this tube comes down here, and then this bottle basically goes up and threads into the pump right there. There's a little piece of the threading that is still stuck up in there, so I need a way to wedge that out. I always keep a few of my most commonly used tools right here in the van so I don't have to go digging for it in a toolbox.
as long as I'm already under the sink making a mess, there's another project I want to take care of. I think the idea of an inline water filtration system using UV is a pretty neat idea. This water filter system came with the Airstream when we got it. It definitely seemed like a pretty good idea. The only problem is it has some pretty fragile tubing and it sprung a leak right away. I did look into fixing it. I looked at the installation instructions and it turns out there's one tiniest piece of plastic. It probably costs a penny to make, but if you don't have exactly that right size piece of plastic, it's not really possible to get a good seal. So I was never able to get the thing sealed up again. Time went by and we just ended up reverting to bottled water. In a tiny space where every little bit of room is premium, unless it's a really robust system, I don't think it's worth the space for our, in our case. So I'm gonna remove it. It'd be nice to just have a little more space to put stuff down there. So here you might be able to see there's all kinds of stuff that is part of this installation. There's the, the main box here that does the UV filtration. And then this is a pre-filter. And then there's a bunch of hoses here that go around and the faucet has a little LED light to let you know that it's on. Also turning on the water turns on the power to this. So there's just a fair amount of tubing and electrical and plumbing that I can get rid of. I'm definitely a little bit torn about this, but we have a family motto, use it or lose it. And we have not used this in a year. So it's gotta go. Because I'm working on Toilet. stuff. Toilet. What are you guys doing? I miss you guys. Yay! What's going on in here anyway? Uh, okay. okay, I definitely love my family, but having three little chaos agents run in in the middle of a job, not the best idea. Back to what I was doing. That's some not very pretty stuff coming out of that filter. So I guess that's reason enough to take this out since I'm not using it. Just a big mess of dried soap from when that bottle spilled. Kind of a funny concept, cleaning up soap. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and call it cabinet closed on this operation. Turkeys! Not a whale! No way! Right there! <gasps> Let's go see them, guys! We can't see the mama because the mama saw it. We'll just look at the babies then. Mama? You think it's gonna fall? It's gonna slip off! Then what will happen? It will spill. I'm not helping, don't worry. Maple's <laughs> <laughs> gotta do everything it. herself. Thank you, Rainbow. 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 Thank you, Rainbow.